for towards Indian culture. Thanks. Now with these words, may I now request uh, Dr. Kenneth R. Balte for his remarks in planning for the future. Our subject, that myself and also Sean Okarishi, is uh, where do we go from here? Before I say a couple of things on, on that topic, I want to offer apologies. I've been one of the t two of us from outside of India, myself and Ravi, Ravi Gupta, inviting so many of you to come and speak. And then what do I do? When you speak, I'm somewhere running around outside. So my apologies and my, my regrets for missing several of uh, the wonderful talks that have been done, have, that you have given. Um, it was a trade-off for me because, uh, as some of you know, we, we plan to produce a documentary film on the Bhagavata Purana. So for that purpose, we're conducting interviews. I want to um, very briefly give the, the concept of the Bhagavata Purana research project, uh, which we began in uh, the Oxford Center for Hindu Studies. Uh, that uh, we have a certain framework, and the framework has the sort of basic idea that if we can facilitate all the incredible spectrum, the wide spectrum of scholarship on the Bhagavata uh, that, that Frank Kumi has so nicely uh, suggested uh, just now, by making the Oxford Center for Hindu Studies a kind of hub uh, for Bhagavata studies uh, to, in a sense, put Bhagavata studies on the map uh, and, and to make it understood, oh, you're interested in Bhagavata Purana studies, well, then you have to go to the Oxford Center of Hindu Studies. If for no other reason, the, the hope is, the idea is, there you will find out what has already been done and what is being done so that you're not doubling up on what has already been done before. But that kind of takes, takes me to the second of uh, what we've conceived, perhaps somewhat randomly, as as a four-phase program, uh, and I just want to run through these uh, as a kind of re reminder. Uh, we discussed this in our original meeting uh, last year uh, here in the C.P. Ramaswamy Iyer Center uh, when we initially planned this conference. And then after me, Shonaka is going to speak on more specifics what we want to do uh, going from here. Our first phase uh, we call building networks and initial publications. Initial publications are indeed uh, two books which we are uh, happy have come out. Uh, both of them are called The Bhagavata Purana. The first is a collection of articles subtitled Sacred Text and Living Tradition. This is conceived as a kind of companion volume uh, to the second volume that came out uh, just a few weeks ago, the Bhagavata Purana Selected Readings. So it's an abridgment, uh, Ravi's and my translations into English with notes and so on. These have come out with Columbia University Press, and we feel that. This is a, an important step for us to kind of signal that, okay, Bhagavad studies are happening. Uh, come join, join the party. Uh, the party's just begun. Uh, 
there is much to be done, and that's uh, kind of one of the messages of those books as well. Our second phase, and that's what I hinted at before, is uh, taking place uh, as we speak, is the collecting of materials and surveying of the field, uh, seeing what has already been done. Materials, we are hearing from Professor Dash about what is in uh, this catalog, what is there, other catalogs. We're, we want to do uh, a more extensive and more comprehensive catalog, cataloging process which will be digitized so that it will be accessible uh, to any researcher online. Um, this, of course, is a stage that any, uh, any uh, doctoral dissertation candidate would like to have available someone who's doing research in any field. They first have to survey their field, what has been done. So we want to make that process as easy as possible, so to say, <laughs> for any scholars who want to study the Bhagavata or any, anything related to the Bhagavata. The third phase uh, we conceive is very much focused on text. Uh, I remember hearing years ago, or re reading, I think it's in a footnote, uh, perhaps it's in Tagari's translation, that there are some 80, 80 Sanskrit commentaries on the Bhagavata. So, um, where are they? Uh, we want to find whatever is there. But then, when you have them, what do you do with them? But well, one thing you want to do is try to find out indeed uh, from which schools are these, are these coming. And it occurred to me as Professor Dash was speaking, uh, it seems to me uh, uh, one step is to take one of these commentaries and go to uh, the tra traditional uh, pundits of a school and ask them, does this look like it's coming from your school? Do you recognize the style, so to say, the philosophical, theological uh, thought, and direction, and so on. So translation and analysis, but as we, as is, has been obvious in this uh, conference, the textual dimension, the Sanskrit textual dimension, is only one dimension of the Bhagavata. Uh, and so all of the other dimensions need to also be somehow registered and it, it has to be available for scholars as far as possible, again, to know what is being done. And then finally we have uh, the idea of synthesis and wider engagement. Um, why, by wider engagement, uh, I would say, for example, com comparative work uh, regarding other religious traditions, also philosophical traditions, certainly, uh, Indian philosophy, and so many areas that can be engaged with. One that I'm particularly interested in is the pedagogical potential of the Bhagavata Purana. How can we take ideas of the Bhagavata Purana into schools, into a high school, into uh, various sorts of uh, educational institutions, and uh, awaken interest among students, amongst uh, young people in, uh, in this text. And this is one reason why we're doing this uh, documentary film Today is the age of film. Who reads a book anymore, right? So if we can awaken interest through a film, that it's worthwhile to also crack open the book. Uh, and then we hope something uh, would be effective in this way. So I speak of four phases, but of course these are overlapping. Uh, and indeed this 
uh, preparation of these books and preparation of the documentary film, this kind of crosses over from our first phase right into our fourth phase. We uh, just come back to this uh, basic point. We are trying with the Oxford Center for Hindu Studies to make a hub, uh, I think that's the appropriate word for uh, Bhagavad studies. And we want to facilitate, and we also need all, all the help uh, that we can get from all of you, the scholars who are uh, so qualified in so many ways. Uh, this is what will make it a success. So I'll hand it over to Joan. Thank you very much. Whoever wrote the text of Bhagavad, whenever it was written, <coughs> Bhagavad did contain a road map for future. From the day it was written, it had a road map for life and living. And I know from my childhood days how Bhagavata became a part of our daily chorus. Today, those houses where Bhagavata was written, sorry, Bhagavata was, Bhagavat was read, have become political house. And that is the state where we are in as far as Eastern India is concerned. And now, over to Saunaka for swing, or uh, planning for the future, Saunaka. Symposium on uh, Maharati Bhagavatam. 
And there's a number of scholars um, who are Maharati scholars, not English speaking, who they want to get involved in this. So this is a whole kind of new development. Um, and there's a number of, of professors of folk and tradition um, who want to get involved in this as well. This could, as far as they're concerned, lead to a series of, of seminar, uh, symposia and publications. Um, and the other thing that they want to do, and we're very interested in the project, there's an older generation of scholars in this country who are very expert in, in the art of the critical edition, etc. And there's a younger generation of scholars who have no experience of this. And there's a generation in the middle who have no interest. And we're connecting these younger scholars from Mumbai University with the Bandakar Institute so that they can go and the work that Madhavi and her students are doing to turn this into a critical edition, not simply a translation. Um, and, and developing a whole new uh, generation of scholars in India who can start to take this work seriously. And so we're doing this with, uh, uh, under the auspices of Professor Mahulkar in the Badakar Institute. Um, the Tamil Bhagavad tradition, uh, uh, Nanda Krishnan uh, has very, you know, she came up to me and said, what about the Tamil tradition? And I said, are you from Tamil Nadu? And she said, yes. I said, what about the Tamil tradition? So it's, this is really how the project has to develop. She has a genuine interest, so let there be a symposium in Tamil Nadu. And she's very kindly uh, volunteered to get this together. I have great faith that she's the man for the job, as they say. <laughs> uh, and uh, so to do a symposium on this, again, ending in publications or a symposia, and develop a team of people. And we have one member of that team has joined from the conference. Um, also, the critical edition issue that I spoke about earlier, this is an ongoing discussion. Uh, the critical edition we have has, is mainly based on Gujarati texts, and there's so many other texts that need to be considered. Um, and that requires research, and uh, Bhuvaneshwari has very kindly um, offered to be considered to be one of these researchers. I'm working with Professor Wilhelm and G.C. Tripathi, and Professor Radhakrishnan in Pondicherry. Um, that's something that's starting to move forward as well. Um, and we're waiting for a proposal of exactly how we do this. Uh, one idea is a concordance, etc. One idea is obviously looking at the, the best examples of the Bhagavatam in the different uh, um, parts of India, the Sanskrit edition that we know of. But, but anyway, that's a, again a work in progress. And then there's individual work. Dr. Radhakrishnan in, in Pondicherry is um, undertaking a critical edition of the Narayanian with uh, a number of traditional scholars that he's in contact <coughs> with in, in Kerala. Um, Professor Mishra obviously is working on the work that he presented to us today. And there are other individuals as well who are coming forward with this. So, as I say, this is a work in progress. It's not that the OCHS has all the funding for this. Oh, sorry, I did forget to mention. Uh, Daniel and Mirja uh, were in discussion about the possibility of, uh, of uh, uh, looking at the pictorial uh, tr tradition of the Bhagavad uh, from texts and actually uh, cataloging everything that we know exists. This is called a big project. <laughs> so we can see if we, if we start to subdivide, the Bhagavad itself is a big project, but even every subdivision is a big project. So we're, we're in discussion about this, and hopefully if we do have fellowships that we can bring them to Oxford, if we can bring them in the same term, this would be a, a tremendous opportunity to uh, focus attention and get some momentum going on that. So as I say, very interesting things developing out of this conference and out of the symposia that we develop elsewhere, we hope more interesting things uh, come. Anyone who have, has interesting ideas, please contact Ravi. Uh, because he has nothing else to do except receive uh, emails and telephone calls from interested parties. Um, and finally, um, publishing. We want to, we've published all our conferences, they've all been published well, and we want to publish this conference as well. Again, see Ravi. <laughs> but we, we do want to commission papers from everyone who presented. Uh, Ravi will be in contact with you. Uh, we do have ideas of where we want to publish, um, there's so many options. Um, and I think the panels on this conference were so excellent. And there, there are too many presentations at this conference as always, but we do have the 
uh, Oxford Centre for the Journal of Hindu Studies uh, that we run with uh, Oxford University Press. And we one issue a year is panels, uh, so that we can use one of those issues. The editors have said they'd be very happy to receive. Um, so we, we can definitely do a book and um, an issue of the Journal of Hindu Studies um, out of this. So that sounds, that sounds all right. <laughs> but that's, that's everything. That's uh, kind of where the project is beginning to go. As, as you can see, this is a project that's devel developing organically, just based on um, uh, concerned citizen scholars, shall we say, uh, putting their hands up and saying, this is what I'd like to do, and let's see how we can make it happen. And if it comes to funding, we'll always find funding. That's not the biggest issue. The biggest issue is just the enthusiasm, the passion to get, to get this kind of study area going. And once it starts to go, it'll attract attention, particularly younger scholars. And that, that's how these things work. And that's what's happened, actually, in this conference. So the more of this we have, the better. So thank you. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank particularly my two colleagues who I worked with for the last year. Uh, uh, Professor Mishra and Dr. Nanda Krishna for the wonderful work they've done at uh, facilitating this conference. Our conference on the Bhagavata Purana is now over. The participants have all gotten home, and I remain here to reflect on the proceedings and on the discussions that I've had with individual scholars with the main question that I've been pursuing, what is so special about this ancient text, which we're told is at least a thousand years old, and which the tradition tells us is some 5,000 years old. How is it that in the present day, in the 21st century, not only in India, but now more and more all over the world, people are reading this text, they're hearing the text, there are performances of the text. What is it so special about this text? And it seems there are basically two uh, points that come up. One is, it is important for people, all kinds of people, because it deals with an issue that we all have to deal with, and that is the fact that we all face death. The king, in the beginning, has been cursed to die in seven days, and therefore he listens to the Bhagavata Purana. And as we also listen in, so to speak, to the teachings of the great sage, Shuka, we become imbibed with the greater vision of a, a broader, a deeper, a higher reality uh, which can bring us beyond the limitations of our body. And the second, and certainly for many people, more important aspect is that the Bhagavata's attention is on Krishna. Shuka's teaching is that we should hear, that it is beneficial for us to hear about, to reflect on uh, this wonderful divinity referred to as Bhagavan, the supreme, the supreme personality of Godhead in all his multifarious, charming, powerful, uh, ways, his surprising ways, his sometimes mischievous ways, uh, his beautiful ways. The Bhagavata invites us into that world. And so we can uh, rest assured that it is worth our while uh, to spend time with this work ourselves, to enter into this world 
uh, for the possibility of a transformation of ourselves. 